It's time for patch notes review, 22nd of August. Though, so the patch is going to drop in a few days from now. A lot of interesting stuff in here. Two new mechs, the Stalker War Emu. It's a ballistic type of Stalker, so it's pretty unique. It definitely adds something new to the game that wasn't there before. And then we have a Viper with SRMs. So an SRM Bomber Viper with thanks God, with fixed jump jets. Both of them are pretty unique, pretty solid. It's definitely something new and interesting to add to your mech bay. Then we have new weapons. Hyper Assault Gauss, Binary Laser Cannon and X-Pulse Lasers. The sounds are okay. This is the Hyper Assault Gauss. Binary laser cannon. I just think the sound of the of the pulse lasers is pretty lame. Anyways, um, stats. How are these weapons supposed to work, and uh, what are they doing with the stats they have? So they are like ghost rifles. They have the same range and velocity of Gauss rifles. They have a charge time. They have a comparable cooldown. Sometimes a little bit less, sometimes the same, sometimes a little bit more. But they shoot like you axe. So they have, uh, they don't jump, but they shoot multiple projectiles per volley. So the damage is not 40 pinpoint, but it's 40 divided in 8 different shells in this case, six different shells in this case, four different shells in this case. It is very, 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 very controversial. Uh, the addition of this spread value, like spread like racks, for example, uh, was very controversial. And I don't want to drop into particulars on, of how this was uh, injected into the final version that got released. I'm just very disappointed the way uh, it happened. And I think this is total nonsense because it's okay nerfing a weapon, but the nerf should not prevent the weapon from doing what it is supposed to do. So if you're creating a charge time weapon with a long range and high velocity, it means that you are designing this weapon to be good at long range. Well, if you have spread, you cannot be good at long range because you will just miss the target. So it's like designing, you know, a car without the wheels or a man without a dick and something like this. It, it, this is utter nonsense. Like you either want the weapon to be good at range and then you put you don't put spread, or you want the weapon to be weak at long range, so you remove the long range, you leave the spread, but you buff something else. Like this concept, it's an utter nonsense garbage that was just uh, released out of a delusional mind of a single guy in there. Uh, then we have the binary laser cannon. This is pretty, pretty strong. It compares to a couple of large lasers. So instead of doing 9 damage, this does 18. So it's as if you're using two large lasers. Comparable heat, good cooldown, duration slightly higher, same range, 4 slots, 9 tons instead of 10. So this is basically a, I'd say, a better version than uh, a couple of large lasers. When we go to the expulses, the concept is completely different. These are mm, continuous beam lasers. So they are meant to deal damage over time. How do they differ from the actual Inosphere pulse lasers? The DPS is more and their damage per heat is the same or slightly better. So you get rewarded more 
if you keep your aim steady on target. I don't think these will be OP broken or anything. I think all of these are pretty balanced. The only thing to notice is that th this concept doesn't make sense. You're telling me that this is a long range weapon, but it isn't because it doesn't hit shit at that range. These will be extremely good though, the way I see it, uh, in uh, combo with laser vomits. So this ends up being just another boost to laser vomit uh, or laser ghost play style. Because they, these, this is a high damage, this is high damage, but useless at, as range, at range. This spread though won't be enough to make the weapon bad at mid-range too. So at mid-range you won't be noticing this spread. This is a good combo with you know, something like heavy larges, large pulses, or say heavy uh, hyper assault gauss heavy larges, and medium lasers. Let's go forward. Weapon adjustments. LRM projectile velocity nerfed. This happens because also the ECM gets nerfed. So we have been nerfing ECM a lot of times. Then we have been nerfing radar deprivation. And uh, we have been buffing, I think, too much LRM velocity in in the quirks, with velocity quirks, applying velocity quirks to the best LRM boats, which in my opinion was a mistake. It got to a point where on most mechs, uh, assaults in particular, it got to a point where even if you have maximum rate of deprivation or close to maximum rate of deprivation and you try to start hiding as fast as possible, as soon as you see that somebody's shooting at you, the missiles are now so fast that you can't hide anymore. Instead, in the past, the LRM velocity used to be close to 100, and that's it. Now it's 210, plus the skill tree, plus the quirks. So it's close to 250, 260 meters per second. They are so fast that no matter how fast you react to them, you still get hit. That's nonsense. LRMs are an aimbot weapon, they are a homing weapon, so in my personal opinion, they are not meant to be good also at high levels of play. So if you have a little bit of skill and you know how to position, where to place yourself, how to hide, you should be able to dodge them even on a larger mech. The problem is that most larger mechs that don't have ECM these days just behave like LRM's landing platforms because there was this sort through the years uh, before the cauldron there was this sort of power creep between ECM radar deprivation and LRM's which was like a hey, buff ECM buff radar deprivation and also buff LRM's okay but now what happens to those who don't have ECM they eat shit while on a, on a smaller mech you can get away without having ECM. On a larger mech, ECM becomes mandatory because otherwise you just eat lerms. And then there was another problem, which was uh, adapting map design because of LRMs. So this, oh, let's add cover everything and let's design maps like a, a sheet like the, those clumped nonsense mods that you see on Fallout where all the shit is thrown randomly, all the items, all the buildings, are the rocks are thrown randomly on the map. The, the, most of the maps lately look like bad, badly designed mods. For example, Halibur Outpost. It's just nonsense. That map is just... Like, if I put a five-year-old baby designing a map, he would have done a better job. That's just garbage. So, by toning down the opposites, ECM, radar deprivation, you can also tone down the LRMs on the other side. I think you need to consider the system as a whole. LRMs, radar deprivation, uh, EC, uh, ECM, radar deprivation, LRMs, AMS, all of these things need, in map design, 
need to be considered as a whole. So on one on one side we buffed the Galactic Probe, buffed LRM velocity quirks on certain mechs, nerfed radar deprivation, nerfed ECM. On the other side, time to nerf LRMs as well to reduce the extremes so it is less frustrating to play in the scenarios where you're not boating ECM. But it's also less frustrating for a LRM boat when there are many ECMs on the other side because ECM now has less range and it is easier to get a lock on ECM. I don't think this nerf is even remotely enough on the LRMs. I think this is just too low. LRM velocity should drop to something like 140 and uh, I hope in the future it will get to that value. But we will see we will see how it plays. Another effect that LRMs have, uh, sorry, another effect that LRM velocity has is, of course, AMS. Because less velocity means that the LRMs will spend more time traveling inside the AMS bubble. So less LRMs velocity means stronger AMS. In fact, one AMS now due to the continuous buffs to LRM velocity. One AMS is pretty much useless garbage. It doesn't do anything. I can see in the future toning down the quirks on the mechs with four AMS like the Corsair or three AMS like the Kid Fox. Like toning down big AMS boats and at the same time nerf LRM velocity to something like 170. And then again, if the LRM drops, the LRM velocity drops to something like 140, 120, I can even see a further nerf on radar deprivation being reasonable. So why not just buff AMS because you're not addressing the issue of mechs who don't have AMS, cannot equip AMS, most clan mechs cannot equip AMS, um, Omnimax. Or they can, you know, to equip it, they need to sacrifice pretty much everything. And uh, they are just too slow to react in time when they get targeted by, by LRMs. Going forward, we have... And then uh, the, the problem here is that if you just buff AMS, you are also nerfing SRMs and MRMs and streaks and ATMs, which doesn't need to happen. Now you can fire four streak force, clan and IS, without heat penalty. Banshee, 3S, agility increased to match the one of the other Banshees. Minor adjustments on the riflemen's, uh, so now they equip the lasers on uh, the highest slot available. This is the nerf to the clan ECM. I would have preferred to have also a nerf on uh, Inner Sphere ECM, I don't understand why this was a clan ECM only. I think there was a big mistake into identifying clan ECM max as the problem. It's just ECM is the problem. And the fact that most inner sphere ECM max suck doesn't mean that there are still some of them that are strong with ECM. As strong as the clan ones, if not stronger. Like, for example, the Marauder 2 with the 2 ER PPCs and 2 Gosses with ECM, or the Cyclops with the 2 ER PPCs, 2 Light Gosses, and ECM. These are just a couple of the examples, but there is also the Assassin with the ECM and a couple of Snub Noses. There are in a Sphere Max that are as strong as clan Max with ECM. I think there is all the uh, uh, Mania of. Uh, Clan laser vomits is completely overrated. Uh, clan laser vomits are not even remotely as strong as people think they are. Minor adjustments for the skill tree to adapt to the new hyper assault ghost rifles. This is quality of life. So now you get information when you get hit, you get information faster. This is huge. 
you could not see the domination circle on most minimaps because of the map color. This should help. Of course, this is just adjustment for the Hyper Assault Goss. Buff to the Piranhas because fuck this game. Let's buff lights even more. Like, fuck this shit. This is nonsense. Piranhas didn't need buffs. They need nerfs. Most of the lights are too strong. They are just as strong at damage dealing as bigger chassis, which is a nonsense. Because if a mech is better at scouting, capping, playing the objective, it should not be also as strong in terms of damage dealing. Otherwise, it turns just into a better option compared to other mechs. So just this continuous buff and buff and buff on light mech is just utter garbage that ruins the game and drives people out of the game. It's evident that people prefer playing heavier chassis because they have fun playing them. So the fact that lights are less played than other mechs it doesn't mean you have to buff them. It just means that people are here to play mechs, not to play Call of Duty and jump all over the place with these little shits. And this is just, it's a problem that the Cauldron will never understand. So every time it's again buff lights, buff lights, buff lights, fuck them. Some adaptation on uh, the Ravens. There are some buffs here and there, nothing major, mostly it's uh, refining and, uh, and tuning. There are some buffs on, uh, on the set of 8s on most of these mechs. Phoenix Hawk as well have been, uh, have been buffed quite a bit. You should try some of them. We can go forward. Yeah, again, these are adaptation. Now there is this new quirk, this new quirk, so it's redundant to have two of these ones. Novas, set of eight buffs. This is another thing I I think is, is extremely stupid. Like buffing the set of eight is stupid. These are Omnimax. They are meant to swap the Omnipods. What's the point of trying to turn them into battle max? It's just this nonsense of wanting to get every sort of retarded build strong. Like, if a build is retarded, it's utter nonsense, it doesn't make sense, it shouldn't be good, it's just counterintuitive to make, you know, uh, an Ultra 20, a PPC, an LLRM, or an Executioner good. It's counterintuitive, the weapons are mismatched, they are not supposed to work together, they shouldn't work together. So why, for example, this Nova with two PPCs on the left side, should have 27, like 75% weapon velocity. That's nonsense. That's another nonsense. Clean up and small buffs for the gargoyles. This is another thing that I... I don't agree having uh, this kind of stuff. Like this generic stuff, I hate it. Turning specific into generic is another very bad thing that kills the diversity in the game. Instead, it should be that this variant has LBX quirks, this other UAC quirks, this other build standard AC quirks, because we have so many different variants that if you put generic quirks on everything, they just all look the same. That's another nonsense. And then in the end, we have some buffs, thanks God, for the Annihilators. I'll never stop saying how underpowered are mechs who are capped to 48 kph in this nonsense NASCAR brawl meta that dominates the game in the higher tiers, especially European tier 1 these days. That's it for today. I hope you guys got something out, out of this review. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll catch you guys next time.